One in every million. This is the estimated number of species that naturally become extinct every year. We don't know how many species this amounts to because we don't actually know how many million species there are on Earth. But based on the evidence we've got, we can estimate that between 10 and 100 species should naturally go extinct each year. This is what's known as the background extinction rate. A mass extinction is a sudden global decrease in biodiversity. And by that we mean there is a sudden increase in the number of species becoming extinct, a significantly larger amount than the background extinction rate. But when we say sudden, we are talking about this in a geological context, so it might be over the space of a couple of million years. There's a number of reasons why this might happen. First off, plate tectonics. So if there is movement of tectonic plates, this is going to result in new climates in areas. This is going to result in sea level changes, glaciation, all this kind of thing. Another one is volcanic eruptions. And sometimes this can happen on absolutely enormous scales where lots and lots of volcanoes over an area might be erupting and covering millions of square kilometers in lava, which is obviously going to be very destructive. Another one is climate change. If suddenly it becomes significantly warmer or cooler than it has been for a while, then this is going to affect the species that live in the area. And also meteor impact. And this is the most famous one because we know that this is the biggest factor in the extinction of the dinosaurs. Also, it's not just the initial catastrophe that can have the biggest effect. There is also an aftermath that goes with them. For example, volcanic eruptions can cause acid rain, although that's a relatively short-term effect. That happens over maybe a few decades. But then also, it emits loads of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, which is going to affect the global temperature, which is also going to affect sea levels. Also, if temperature gets affected, this changes the amount of oxygen in the oceans. If temperature rises, it reduces the ability of oxygen to dissolve into water. Another factor is if we add greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, we are adding carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, which also increases the amount of carbonic acid in the oceans. So the oceans become more acidic. Let's look at a little time scale of some of the geological history of the Earth. This is between the present, which is marked as zero on the right hand side, right back to 500 million years before present. Um, to give you some context, the Earth is roughly nine times older than this. Now, we're going to look on this diagram at the percentage of families lost. And family is a word we can use in biology, which refers to a group of species. And there's up to 1,000 species in one family. So if we go back roughly 440 million years, we've got a mass extinction that resulted in about 25% of families being lost. In the Devonian, around about 19% of the families on Earth were lost. The Permian-Triassic was absolutely devastating and around about 54% were lost. At the end of the Triassic, there was another one where 23% of families on Earth were lost. And the most famous one, which resulted in the death of the dinosaurs, was the Holocene mass extinction in which 17% of all families on Earth were lost. So there are five recorded mass extinctions in the history of the Earth that we know of. Now then let's look at some more important numbers. Number two. This is the number of mammals expected to go extinct every 400 years. And this is according to background extinction rates. 89 is the number of mammals that have become extinct in the past 400 years. It seems very likely that this is a consequence of human activities, including hunting things to extinction, polluting areas, destruction of habitats. And so you can see why some people are arguing that right now we are in the midst of the sixth mass extinction event, because currently the number of extinctions occurring are significantly above the background rate. Let's think about how you could get tested on this in an exam. Perhaps discuss the causes and timing of extinction events through geological history. And that's a three mark question. First off, there have been many mass extinction events, or you could specify that there have been five recorded which are past extinctions occurring suddenly over geologically short spaces of time. 
Then you could list some of the causes of them, such as meteor impacts, volcanic eruptions, and then detail the fact that the organisms died from the initial impact as well as the environmental consequences that followed. <laughs> 